welcome to No Walls. As you can see, everybody's not abiding by the <laughs> that these are being obedient. Welcome to No Walls. This is my first people, never video. The camp. So this is going to be a new experience. Um, again. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to No Walls. I'm so excited to have each of you worshiping with us this Sunday. And happy Sunday goes out to all of my sailors and to all of you serving in the military along with your families. Thank you so much for everything that you have done in times of war and in times of peace. And happy Sunday goes out to all of the youth, the young adults, and to those of you of wisdom. Um, as always, I'm really excited about today's message. Um, you know, God is really working on us. And it's so good to know that we're in a season of communicating with him, forming real relationships with him. Not these phony, I went to church, I came home, <laughs> and I was still myself. Um, but these real relationships. And to hear all of the beautiful testimonies of God moving uh just showing and proving that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is still the God of Lee and Stephanie and Sydney. Like, it's like, it's, it's the same God, you know. Um, and to hear these testimonies of God's protection and his provision coming out of our lives in modern day um, makes you want to get closer and closer uh, to God. And so... Um, just so grateful to be in the midst of that. Um, and I do pray that every week that you don't leave quite the same, that you leave considering Christ, considering the blood, considering that Jesus died for your sins. Like at the end of every message, I hope it leads you back to what, uh, Jesus did on the cross. Every message should lead you back to the fact that we are saved from ourselves <laughs> and that he's coming back for us one day. Um, today's message is very, uh, it's a familiar story for those who um, have been in the word for a long time. If you are relatively new to the word, it might be a new story to you, um, but it still holds a lot of power. Um, and a preacher once said that <laughs> his mentor told him, listen, if ever you don't know what to preach, just preach Naaman. <laughs> like, there's so many powerful messages in the story of Naaman um, that on any given Sunday, when you feel as a minister that the Lord is speaking, but you don't quite know what he's saying, read Naaman. Uh, he, this, his story is, is one of my favorites um, in the Bible. Um, so we will be coming out of the book of Second Kings the fifth chapter. And I'm just going to read a portion of Naaman's story. I'm going to read verses 9 through 12. I'm going to do the entire story of Naaman, but I'm going to highlight verses 9 through 12. It says, So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, <laughs> wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. So he turned off and went in a rage. Um, and that again is Second Kings 5 verses 9 through 12. And today's message is stop believing in yourself. Stop believing in yourself. I know... <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We live in a world um, where mental health is uh, becoming prominent. Um, some of, of us who don't um, have anything diagnosed, the world has told us that something is mentally wrong with us. We just haven't been diagnosed with it yet. Um, the world has told us 
um, that we ought to believe in ourselves. And if we just, if you just believe in yourself, you can do anything. Um, and so uh, that is what is taught in modern day culture is to believe in yourself. And so for me to say, look, don't believe in yourself, stop believing in yourself, for me to say that um, contradicts greatly uh, what we are taught in school and what we are taught when we go to, a, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when we go to uh, some type of therapist or listen to someone, they say, listen, all you have to do is just believe in yourself, you know, and your dreams will come true. Um, and so today I want to say, look, don't, <laughs> do not believe in yourself because that's kind of what's getting some of us, a lot of us, most of us, all of us in trouble <laughs> is that we believe in ourselves. Scripture is very clear. Uh, scripture tells us, do not lean. Listen, that's scripture. That ain't, that is not me. It says, do not lean to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. It, it, we're told, have a conversation with God at, at all times. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Like, like continue. It says, what the Lord began in you, he will see to completion. Y'all can go all the way to Philippians 4. Look, I can do all things. No, you can't. But how? Through Christ. And so when we begin to look to ourselves, we reject the word which says, do not put your hope, your faith, your trust, everything into man. You are man. Do not put your faith, your trust, or your hopes in what you can do. That's why many times you will hear us saying, I just can't do this anymore. Well, you couldn't do it. <laughs> you couldn't do it anyway. The only way you can do it right? It's through the power of what? The Holy Spirit. Of who? The Holy Spirit. And the more that I learn and understand that, the more God is able to do because he's saying, now you're throwing your weight on me. Now you're depending on me. So I am going to encourage you today so that you don't miss the hand of God to stop. Don't believe in yourself believe in what Jesus did on the cross. Believe in God. Believe in the Holy Spirit. Believe in the Trinity. Believe that Jesus is coming back for you. If you want something to believe in, to have true peace and true joy, then you must believe in Jesus Christ. Um, I believe it's the book of Timothy, you know, that says it's, it's not because of anything we have done. <laughs> You know, it's not that it's not because I've been so good. It's because he's been good. Um, and so before Jesus even steps foot on this earth, we have the story of Naaman. And at birth, he was given this name, which means be pleasant. And Naaman was Naaman. Uh, if you go back to the beginning of chapter five, Naaman was not just this great warrior, this successful warrior, um, but he was loved. He was, he was, people wanted good for Naaman. Um, as a matter of fact, it says that he defeated all of these armies and he was successful through the power of the Lord. And so that's why he was so loved because he was so successful, but his success came from the Lord. Whether he acknowledged God or not, that was his success. Um, and so Naaman, out of everything that he had, out of everything that was going good and going right, and and no matter how loved he was, no matter how handsome and perfect he was, he did suffer. And he suffered from leprosy. Proving again that you can have everything. You can have everything. But without the hand of God over your life, there are some great suffering. And so Naaman was having this great suffering. Um, it's not true for everybody. We can't just take one story and say, well, I'm Naaman. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like but, but this is a great example of not trusting in yourself and your own powers. Um, so yeah, this, this, this young girl, uh, who was, um, his wife's servant and she loves, loves Naaman because he was a good guy. 
she said to his wife, hey, listen, I know there is a prophet in Israel who can heal him. And they believed. They just believed. I mean, they didn't see any reason why she, she was of good character. She had no reason um, because she was part of the children of Israel. I'm sure they had heard about her God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the, the God who parted the Red Sea, the God who's done all these wonderful, miraculous things. And, you know, why not? So, okay. So Naaman, trusting the this little girl's words, uh, go to his king and says, hey, king, I just want to go be healed of leprosy. Like I'm suffering from it and I want to be healed. And uh, the king says, absolutely, write this letter. But the king makes a mistake. <laughs> Listen, um, sometimes people in authority over us, sometimes people that love us, um, sometimes people who do want good for us, they don't serve God and don't have full understanding and certainly cannot instruct you in the way. And so this king says, okay, go to the king of Israel so that he can heal you. Little girl didn't say nothing about the king of Israel. She said, <laughs> go to the prophet. <laughs> And so Naaman collects all his clothes. He gets all his money, like a million dollars in our present day. He takes a million dollars. And he um, he goes not to the prophet. He goes to the king. And he says, hey, I'm here. Here's a letter from my king. And I'm here for you to heal me. <laughs> and the king is like, what? And begins ripping his clothes and going crazy and all this other stuff. And it's like, I can't heal you. Like, what does he want me to do? Is he trying to start a war? Like, what is his problem? Nah, 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 nah. He goes this whole dramatic sequence. And, you know, it brought me to sometimes when people are trying to help us and they don't hear all of the instructions that we are given, they lead us astray and to people who are easily angered and to the wrong person. And we're like, it didn't work. And then we go back home because it didn't work. And this and that, nah, 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 nah. but praise God on high <laughs> name, uh, Elisha, the prophet, the one that the little girl was sending him to heard. And this king is going to summon, <laughs> go tell the king to send Naaman to me. So one of Elisha's servants go and say, hey, Naaman, you don't want to see the king of Israel. You want to see the prophet of Israel. Two different assignments, two different roles. Right then and there, the king was like, why? The, even the king knew, don't believe, <laughs> stop believing in yourself. Like, don't believe in me. Like, don't look to me. <laughs> and he was like upset and so Naaman goes, the Bible says, to the door of Elisha. Elisha don't even come out. I took that almost as if Elijah is saying, if I come out, he's going to worship me. If he comes out, he's going to look to me, and there's, it's not going to be me. Like, I don't know why. I wasn't there, and certainly I'm going to continue studying this story and this passage of Scripture, and... I cannot wait for God to unpeel a lot more of the layers for me. I don't know. Other ministers may already have it and God may have already revealed it to them. But for me, Elijah did not show himself. He sent a messenger. Um, and, you know, sometimes we want God to come down. And he is like, I already sent. I left the comforter. I, my Holy Spirit is there. You have somebody. Why do you need to see God? I am one. I am the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I've left the Holy Spirit to teach you all things, to remind you all things, to show you all things. Like, he's there. Why? I need a sign. I need a miracle. I need all this other stuff. And so the messenger comes and says, Naaman. Remember, Naaman means pleasant. He's supposed to be pleasant. Naaman, Elisha said, <laughs> um, go and wash. Go and dip seven times in the Jordan River. Jordan River 
is not as clean. Like, like he like, I, oh, that just didn't sit well with Naaman. Naaman went off pleasant. Some people are pleasant. They're nice. They're prideful. I, I, I've suffered from pride. <laughs> I suffer from, I know better. Like, I don't know what to <laughs> Some of us, we not, don't tell me what to do. I'm not going to do that. That's, yeah. Some of us don't want to get down and dirty. We want everything to be pristine and clean and perfect. And that's, that was Naaman. Sometimes we want everything to be our way or no way. That's why you can't believe in yourself. Because yourself is going to end up hurting you or keeping you from the blessings and the miracles of God. And here he is, I am, Naaman. Now he's honored in his land. He's come over to Israel. He's given his yes. Some of us, God told us exactly what to do. This is, you want a way out? Here's your way out. And we don't like that way out. And so we begin to declare who we are. Sometimes it's in the form of self-pity. Sometimes it's in the form of pride. Sometimes it's in, I don't want them to be right. Sometimes it's resentment. Whatever it is, we want everything to be straightforward. God, come down into my room. Tell me exactly what you want, and then I will go. But until I see you face to face, it's going to be too late by the time you... <laughs> by the time you, you do not want to see the Lord face to face if you have not obeyed his word. <laughs> but that's us. And sometimes God will send a messenger, you know, and it's like, how do I know that's of God? A, it's unsolicited information. They just come to you and they speak into your life. It's confirmed in your spirit and it does not go against the word of God. Anything that comes along and creates confusion is not of God. He says, I am not the author of confusion. But Naaman, believing in himself, I believe in me. Therefore, I will be healed. No, sir. <laughs> you are not going to be he he healed doing it your way. And so Naaman says, no. My first problem is he didn't come out. Why do you, why'd you send somebody? I'm going to need to hear it from you. Why did you send somebody out here when I came to your door to see you? I first, I came, I saw your king. Then I came into your country and now I come to your door and you don't even have enough uh, honor. You don't even have enough respect to come out here and tell me yourself. That was his first problem. Pride. And pride is going to kill a lot of us if we do not recognize it. It's sneaky. It's hidden. It's not, I'm proud of you. That's not what pride is. Pride is my way or no way. Pride is I'm right and I'm not going to stop until you hear that I'm right. And God's like, I got it. All I do is speak the truth and then leave it alone. I got it. I got you. Elisha did not address Naaman. So his first problem was you didn't come outside and you didn't tell me the instructions. Now. I don't even like those instructions. Even if you had come out to tell me, even if you showed me enough respect to come outside and to tell me to go and wash, A, I am not fixing to wash. I'm not going to dip in the water. I didn't come to dip in water. I could have stayed at home and dipped. And then you told me to dip in the Jordan River. Let me tell you something about our Savior. Y'all want to know where he was baptized? <laughs> Years later, years after Naaman didn't want to wash in the Jordan, Naaman did not want to wash seven times in the Jordan River for his healing. But over in Luke, in, in chapter four, we see that that's where Jesus was baptized in the same Jordan River. It's not good enough. The water is not good enough for naming, but Jesus is good enough for our Savior. Come on, y'all. Some of the stuff that you just feel like, it's got to be different for me. Listen, Jesus already came in the form of man. We've already talked about how he cried. 
We already talked about how he took on the form of man for us to understand. He has done it. Naming Jesus is going to do the same thing. He's going to be cleansed. He's going to go down and be baptized by man. <laughs> He's going to go and dip in the Jordan River. He didn't like where in his mind this is what he desired. He said, I want you to come out here. Wave your hand on my leprosy <laughs> with your magic stick or your hand. Call out the name of the Lord, and then I will get my healing. You know, God, Jesus told us, he doesn't like us to be so eloquent in speech when we're praying. That's not doing all that. Doesn't take all that. He already showed us. He's saying, listen, I said, let there be light, and there was. I just spoke a word. And sometimes those of you who are just doing it for show, he was just doing it so he could say, let me go. He wanted to go back and he wanted to be boastful and he wanted to be able to say they came out and they touched me and they did this and they healed me and they blah, 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 and Elijah and Elisha and Elijah. He wanted some grand flash of light, just like most of us. God has given us instruction. He has told us exactly how to be healed. We refuse. We do not want to change our lifestyle. We want to continue listening to music. We want to continue allowing nonsense into our souls. And God has already said, stop listening to that music because that's what's ministering to you. You're letting those songs make you angry. You're allowing those songs to make you tough. You're allowing those songs to make you independent. Look, don't believe in yourself. Believe in God. Stop believing in you. Stop believing in these rappers and these, you know, uh, TV hosts and all this. Stop. Believe in God. Stop believing in your talents. Believe in the Holy Spirit and the work that he's doing through you. When you begin to give God credit for things, he wants to do more. And here Naaman was. No, he needs to come up out this house. Well, fine. In his anger, he looked foolish to us because we know how the story ends. That's what God is saying. I already know how your story ends. So all of y'all getting mad about my instructions, you look foolish because... I'm trying to help you. I am, I'm answering your prayer, name it. I'm t you asked, it's asked and answered. Now, whether or not you like the answer or the way to get to the answer, that has nothing to do with me. When Jesus told the lame man, get up and walk, he healed him. He was healed, prayer answered. Now, he had to decide who's going to get up and walk. <laughs> he put mud over the blind man's eyes and said, now you go and wash. He had to make a decision. Is he going to go and wash or not? He's like, you're healed, but that's up to you whether or not you take my advice and do it. You take my command and you do it. And here Naaman is. Naaman, you are healed. All you have to do is go into the Jordan River. Dip seven. Not twice. Some of, us, some of us have dipped three times. Nothing has changed. And we're like, I quit. We didn't get out of the water. And God's like, stay there for your healing. God has told us to do stuff. And because we haven't seen the change, we've gone back into our old ways. And God's like, I'm working on it. If you watch the Testament with Moses and you saw him rolling back the waves at night, he did it at night during the night. It wasn't like that waves part. It was like he began to roll them slowly. He rolled back. Had they done, had they crossed any sooner, they would have crossed on muddy ground and they could have gotten stuck in the mud. But they had to wait until God was finished naming. You got to dip seven times. How many times we got to march around this wall? You got to march around six times. On the seventh time, you got to march around seven times. We don't ever want to see it to completion. Why? We just want to believe in ourselves and our own abilities. Why do you have 12 jobs to make ends meet? No. Why don't you have one job and use the rest of that time to worship God and watch him begin to open doors that you didn't think could be opened? Watch him begin to heal brokenness that you didn't think could be put back together again. And Naaman said no to God's answer. 
because it wasn't the way he wanted. He believed in his way. He believed in him. He did not believe in God's way or in God. The beautiful thing that I love the most is Elijah said nothing. Elijah didn't come out and be like, well, look, it's a, look listen, bet. <laughs> Me, I've been like, listen, let me tell you right now, I'm in Elijah, I'm like, you can go on, get off my property. I, you know, I, I gave you a chance. Elijah said nothing. It wasn't Elijah who changed his mind. It was servants. It was the people who had spent time with Naaman that really wanted the best for him. And they gave him wisdom. They gave him information to consider. Sometimes people give us their answer. And when you ask the question why, there is no, there's, there's no wisdom behind it. The wisdom doesn't line up with what God would want for them. And so here his servants, people that are less than him, say, hold on, master. Hold on, hold on. Um, you would rather go back Come on, y'all. In the same condition, you don't want change. You don't want to be better. If you leave and don't do it, you're going to have leprosy. Like we know that. You might not. It might not work. We don't know. We don't know. We, your servants, we don't know if it's going to work. What we do know is it's not going to hurt anything. <laughs> it's not even going to hurt anything to try and see. But you would rather go home knowing you're still sick with disease than give it a chance. They said, listen, what if he gave you a difficult task? God made it easy for you. Dipping seven times is nothing. Do it. What are you fussing about? And some of us are running around. I don't want to change. I don't want to be better. I don't want to stop cussing. I don't want to stop listening to this is my favorite musician. This is my favorite song. This is my favorite beat. And wondering why the Holy Spirit can't just reside because you're putting nonsense in your soul. Because you're leaning to your understanding. You're doing what you want. You believe in you. And here the sermon is basically calling him a fool. Remember, it says a fool vents his whole soul. Rage. He, you, you, you begin to, you look foolish getting angry about something so simple. You've made something so simple, so difficult. If the Lord tells you to move, then move. I don't want to move. Why? Because I'm scared. But do you have the resources to move? Oh, yeah. Well, then let's try it and see. Remember Dan the Daniel fast that everybody does. He did not say everybody start eating vegetables. He did not say that. He did not say, hey, in the end, this is going to be the results. He said, I tell you what, let's just do an experiment. Let's just try my God and see. Some people don't even want to try God and see, won't he make a way? Let's see if it's God. If it's not going to hurt nothing. That's what Daniel said. Let me and just us, your whole, all your soldiers can eat from the king's table. But just, just me and my friend, us, let us try. To, let us obey God and just see what happens. After 10 days, we don't have to do it that long. Just give us 10 days. Everybody's on the Daniel fast for a whole month. Trying to figure out why they can't do it. <laughs> but for real, he's like, 10 days. Let's just try it and see. He said, I don't believe in me. I believe in God. That's why some of us don't obey God because we don't yet believe in him. We still believe in ourselves. Stop believing in you. Don't believe in yourself. Believe in God. And they spoke wisdom. The servants spoke wisdom the master someone lowly god that's what god does he keeps using people that are that are considered nobodies he keeps using people that are considered less than he keeps using people that no one can really explain um, how 
He, that's why he doesn't want us to believe in ourselves. He wants to use those that we have forgotten about. He wants to use people that feel unheard, like, like your time is coming. He's going to use you for something great. He doesn't care if people see you right now. He doesn't care if people hear you right now. He's saying, I hear you and I see you and I'm developing you. If shh, Just be quiet. There will come a time, servant, where you will speak up and you will make the difference. Naaman didn't make the difference. Elisha did not make the difference. It was the servants that made a difference. They may not have been heard at any point in the kingdom where Naaman was, but in this moment in time, they changed everything. Just wait for the appointed time. And here Naaman was. He considered wisdom. Whatever. I'll do it. I'll surrender. How powerful are we going to be when we start surrendering? And he surrendered. He stopped believing in himself. Naaman in that moment said, "I'm I, 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 okay. And he dips once. Nothing, y'all. It's not like, it doesn't say then one thing changed. He dipped twice. It doesn't say and then his hand was, it didn't say that. <laughs> like he had to complete the task. Some of us have been given so many things to do for this great miracle. Some of us, not all of us, some of us just, God, just, that's just that. But some of us have been given an if-then blessing. Like, if you can do this, then. He blesses us. He shows favor on us. But some, some of these things he's given us, hey, I need you to take Isaac to the rock. The kind of blessings and miracles. So Naaman does it. And he is here. And he begins to declare the glory of God. That's what he wants out of your life. He wants you to declare. He doesn't want you to say, oh, well, Miss Lee, Pastor Lee, Lee, Leanne, Leah, Leah, whatever they call me. <laughs> she, no, no, I don't want that. Everything. That God does for you. He's saying, I want the only explanation to be God did it for me. And here he is. He begins to declare from this day on, from this day forward, I'm going to run on and tell the world what he has done for me. This is the God that I will serve. And he says to Elisha, here I want to give you things. And Elisha says, I cannot take payment for something that I did not do. This has nothing to do with me. This is nothing but the Lord. He says, I will serve your Lord. And he goes, but wait, 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 wait. Um, I, need, I need to ask God in advance for forgiveness because when I go back, um, I won't be able to save my people, my community, my family, if I begin to declare God publicly. So when I go into the temple, I will be forced by my king to bow down. Um, but, but, I'm, but I'm going to declare that it is God. And Elijah said, go, go in peace. Stop believing in yourself. There's nothing you can do. It's, it's, it's not by what we have done that saves us. It's not you. It's not your good works are not through you. If if all the good that you've done is so that you can get glory, you've gotten your glory. And uh, congratulations. And, you know, you can tell everybody what you did. <laughs> um, but God is saying, I want you to do good. So that I can see, me and you can see the good that I've done in your life. And you run on. And when I make a way out of no way, I want you to tell people that it was me. I want you to run on and tell the world what I did for you. Believe in me. Because look what he says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Stop believing in yourself. Put everything. They just throw your weight on them. I mean, like I'm just beginning to say, okay, God, well, I don't, <laughs> if you don't, then it won't get done. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow you, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move when I know that's you telling me to move, and I'm gonna do when I know it's you telling me to do. But if it's anything that I'm doing so that I get glory, God, I don't want it. Protect me from the hidden traps. Close those doors. Amen. Amen. I hope that you take this message today and say, you know what? It's okay if I get have to get a little dirty to get to my miracle. 
Whatever it is, God. I, w I wish we could start living that kind of life. Whatever it is, God. I'm willing. Send me, I'll go. I might be a little afraid right now, God, but send me and I'll go. I'm not too sure, but I'm not going because I believe in me. I'm going because I believe in you. Send me. Send me, God, and I will go. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today is a really good day to do so. All you have to do is admit that you are a sinner in need of the Savior. That his blood that was shed is enough to cover a multitude of your sins, all of your sins. That he was buried and that he rose again. And that he lives with the Father and that he is coming back for his children, for his church. Um, if you believe that, you are absolutely saved. I'm excited. We have four people this summer uh, to baptize. God is just, he is just, ooh. Let me just tell you, I try not to get emotional every time I think about the power of the Holy Spirit just moving through the ministry. It's not so much that we are growing in numbers, but we are growing spiritually. We are genuinely learning more and more about God and how much he truly loves us. Um, and so... Um, if you, if you want to be saved, all you have to do is admit that. And if you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to us here at no walls. Now what at gmail.com. And we will be happy to pray with you, pray for you or answer any questions that you may have. And if all hearts and minds are clear, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now thanking you so much, God, for being God, for being good, for being all-powerful, God, for making ways where there aren't any, God, for going ahead of us and making our crooked ways straight. God, I thank you right now for the miracle you are going to perform this fall, God. I believe you. I believe in overflow, God. I declare the victory right now in the name of Jesus. I declare healing, God, over all of the people, God, that are in my heart. You know the issues of our hearts heart God I declare healing right now that we won't even be able to explain the how we will just say it was nobody but the Lord and God I promise I will be very careful to be sure that you get all of the praise God I thank you in advance God I thank you for Jesus I thank you for every word that you have spoken over our lives God God help us to change help us to be better help us to obey Thank you for your Holy Spirit. We praise you and we ask all these things in your precious son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining us again. I cannot wait to see you next week. God bless you. Bye.